all of nature blossoms. The sun rising, the flowers opening, the birds singing. This beautiful gift of life. Just imagine what paradise was like before there was any rupture with God. When our hearts and minds and soul were all together and no jealousies or envies or bitterness or harshness, condemnation, judgmentalism prevailed in our thoughts. It wasn't even present. It wasn't even present. It just wasn't even there. The total interior harmony that we long for, that that was the way we lived. This is God's plan for humanity. And who's stronger? Is God stronger or is Satan stronger? And who's going to win? I love today's readings. About the human heart and God's plan for the human heart. And we're in chapter four of the second letter to Timothy. We have a very uh, mature, advanced Paul. His heart was really in trouble decades before as he chased down believers in Jesus with tr such passion and with such a very clear mind about that, uh, based on his studies, brilliant studies with Gamaliel in Jerusalem, a great teacher, marvelous teacher. And how Paul has been transformed in those decades and the way he's talking about having completed the race and run the course. And he went through tremendous turmoil in his heart and carried out very violent deeds. And in his wake, there have been thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands of people who have chosen that route to eradicate believers but maybe God's plan will triumph in many of their hearts, just like in Paul. The triumph in the human heart. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move this mountain. There's an extraordinary invitation in Revelation, God's whole plan of revelation, the whole plan of salvation as it has been revealed and developed in human history by God's amazing mercy, by that heart that knows no bounds in love for us as we were looking yesterday a little bit in those readings. And you read that text of Paul where his heart is so, 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 so mature, so purified, ready for martyrdom. Nothing will separate him from the love of Christ. And he's now looking back in these lines with the spirit of encouraging Timothy, who's facing big challenges, leading the community of believers. And he's saying, look at, I have finished the race and Timothy knew pretty well what Paul had been through, all the beatings, all the scourgings, all the, the stonings, the whippings, the shipwrecks, the work, the effort, the, the toil and the interior toil of worry and concern for the health of the communities, their spiritual health. 
the restlessness and ability to endure so much travel in precarious situations. So an amazing uh, path of deep transformation that reached such a level of, we can say, a sanctity, of holiness. In a man that was filled with incredible hatred earlier, systematic, profound, deep, habitual, committed. And there's our first reading, amazing. And then we're also invited today in the liturgy to look at another heart. It's kind of hard to separate Jesus and his mother because there'd be no Jesus without the mother. Like every child, we're so dependent. Those first nine months of existence in the womb. And maybe, let's say, the first nine years. <laughs> What's the role of a mother? And, and it's become the first 19 years and sometimes the first 29 years. And kids are still very dependent on their parents. But back in the day, surely Jesus was with Joseph, providing the living for that little family in Nazareth, serving people's needs of, in their construction, in their homes, in the buildings, maybe in Sepphoris that theory that he would have worked there in the capital of Galilee before Tiberius was made capital of Galilee. Just imagine that contact. Who taught him his prayers? Because he became one like us in everything, except sin. That mystery of that heart whom the angel from heaven greeted as full of grace. who was so free to be able to say, let it be done unto me according to your word. What a heart. Sometimes we struggle so mightily when it says, forgive your enemies, do good to those who hurt you. And she was full of grace. It's good for us to see people like Paul finish the race, to see those who are full of grace. face to face at the race and with grace. We need that encouragement, that uplift. The little animals here in the mountain, the little calves, what they learn along with their their mother cow with the others. We all learn from each other. Look at the little, is that a calf there behind the first white cow on the left? I'm trying to zoom in more, but maybe I'm fully zoomed in. No, I get a little bit more in it. I think that must be a calf there, a red one, is it? But I could be, yeah, it's just too small, it's too, is it another cow? <laughs> well, anyway, you know, it's all of nature is like that. And in our human life as well, we are probably the maximum of dependency for the maximum amount of time, more than any other creature in, in coming to viable maturity with our parents near us. Amazing mystery. And she kept all these things in her heart. And I think Paul is a bit like that as well. I think people who are listening to God have a heart that has a lot of life inside it. It's not distracted with the clutter and the, and the noise. There's a space in there where there's a company with God remembering all these things. It's a great pathway to maturity. To ponder the mysteries of God's doing in our own lives, his providential hand 
the gift of all the creatures. And we can ponder them from scientific knowledge to also just their beauty, their, their they have value for memory, for stimulation of imagination, for communication of joy and love to each other. There's so much in all of this world for us to grow to great holiness, to continue serving with patience in all the challenges and trials and difficulties and crucifixions of life. What a path. People, let me say goodbye to you. God bless you. See you later, alligators. I had extraordinary moments yesterday and yesterday evening with uh, visitors here. Heart-to-heart -heart exchange with Wesleyan pastors. People profoundly blessed to have been here some days in Galilee. skis. I wonder what the fish are thinking in the water when the jet skis go by. God bless you. See you later, alligators. At the least in heaven.